Cannabis does not produce overdose or deaths in adults. That's off the table. Uh, that's clear. There's no doubt about it. Um, and so I, I appreciate her. That's saying, absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Right. Thank you. And, and you've said that a number of times and I appreciate you saying that. OK, so here's what I want to do. I want to go through the bill and then I want to say uh, what some objections I had. I'll, I'll be relatively quick. Uh, what And who's for it? Keiko's for it. League of Cities is for it. KEA, Joint Executive Council on Veteran Organizations, Council for uh, Disability uh, D uh, Development Disorders, uh, KJA, Multiple Sclerosis Society, um, the N Kentucky Nurses Association, uh, Senator Rand Paul, a number of other people. I can't go through the counties and cities that have adopted resolutions supporting it because they're too numerous and we don't have time to do that. What is not in this bill? This bill is no smoke. I hear a lot of people beat up on the bill because they're going to Folks saying, smoke, smoke, smoke. This bill's no smoke. This bill has no self-grow. I've taken some things out of the bill that I think should be in it in order to get it passed. But it does not have smoke. It does not have self-grow. The big picture, before I get into particulars, you have to have a bona fide relationship with a physician or an APRN who's authorized to uh, prescribe controlled substances. It's not everybody. It's a physician or APRN. You have to have a qualifying condition. We've noted four qualifying conditions. It's not wide open. There is local control. So once this bill passes, and I'm confident it will, if given a vote, I know it will. Once this vote passes, there's local control to take it off the books if a particular county or city doesn't want it. There's a cultivators, there's processors, there's dispensaries, there's safety compliance facilities, and voluminous rules that, that apply to each of them. It goes into the Department of Health, not the alcohol beverage control. It, it requires a pharmacist's approval, annual approval. From the beginning, in-person visit with the pharmacist, and continuous tele, uh, by, by telehealth, and they have to be annual visit at least once a year. The information goes into CASPER so folks can see it. All the players can see it, including law enforcement. And, um, and it's not taxed because we don't tax medicines in Kentucky. It's taxed at an excise level like we do other medicines, but it's not taxed at the point of sale. Uh, Section 1 has, has, uh, has uh, definitions, including what a bona fide relationship is and what practitioners are. There are a number of definitions. just want to go through these. I'm not going to go into particulars on what's in these. Uh, because uh, much because of time. Uh, Section 2 give le gives legal protections for all participants, practitioners, card holders, physicians, attorneys, um, pharmacists, and everyone else, so provided that so long as they're complying with the provisions of the Act. Section 3 allows the Department of Public Health to regulate and tells them what to do, how to go through the accreditation process. It, it sets up a board. The board has eight doctors and APRNs appointed by the governor. They have to have uh, expertise in particular in, uh, enumerated areas, has one pharmacist and six patient advocates. Annual report to the General Assembly. That annual report is mighty robust. So we can make sure that we're doing what we need to do. We'll know the profits of every business involved. We'll know how many people are getting this. We'll know what conditions they're getting it for. Of course, only four are qualified, by the way. Purchase, uh, Section 4 has purchase and possession limits. You can only have 30 days limit at one time, 10, 10 days on your person unless you're tra transporting at home. It has to be in a sealed package, two-step opening process. That's the best what we found in other states, so we've taken it and made it Kentucky's. A minor may only use it if they have a caregiver. A caregiver has to, has to be a parent or has to be a legal guardian. cannot be just anyone. And a, and a caregiver, caregiver can only have a, major, a maximum of three uh, people in their, in their care. Um, caregivers do not get paid like they do in other guardianship proceedings. Senator West, as you know, they only get reimbursed here. There's no, there's no profit motive for a caregiver. We're trying to remove all of the of all of the incentives to misbehave here. Section five has due process for cardholders. If you're a cardholder uh, and you go through the process, you you do not waive your constitutional rights. Uh, so people cannot come into your home just because you're you're a cardholder and and uh, have a presumption that you that you're a lawbreaker. You're a sick person, as your physician says that you are. You're trying to be better. Section six is the restrictions on cannibal use. You cannot operate a car. You cannot operate a car. So all the stuff that we were talking about earlier on that, you can't, you can't operate a car as you can't now on, on marijuana or alcohol or any of, the, any of the other things that we talk about. You cannot possess it on school grounds, in the jails, or on federal property. You, um, if you violate, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your card and you're subject to prosecution. This bill ain't no joke. We're talking about medical cannabis. We're talking about helping people who need help. We're not talking about making it available willy-nilly. Section 7, after talking with the Chamber of Commerce, it talks about employer rights. Employers, I don't like this. Employers are not required to allow uh, their employees to have uh, medical cannabis. They can terminate them for that purpose. I thought it should be used 
the same as every other thing, opioids, which are much more dangerous. But in order to get the bill a vote on in the House and to get it passed, we have allowed employers to have their own rules, including not allowing not allowing their employees to to uh, have a card and, and be a, a patient in getting medical cannabis. Uh, Section 8 talks about the patients have the same rights as any other citizen. So the fact that your card order cannot be used against you in a custody proceeding. It cannot be used against you for a landlord. Folks have a right to be housed. Folks have a right to their kids. Uh, Section 9 establishes the authorization process for physicians and what their responsibilities are. If you want to be a physician or if you want to be an APRN that, uh, that uh, recommends this, you have to apply from your licensing board, the Kentucky Board of Nursing and the Kentucky Board of Medical Licensure. I practice law in front of those two boards all the time. Highly responsible, respective people. Not just anybody can get it. So if someone, if a doctor uh, wants to uh, participate and the Kentucky Board of Medical Licensure thinks, nah, not this one, they can stop it. If one does get approved and later needs to be unapproved, they, they, it's, you know, it's an annual uh, re-registration. So the, it allows the, the professional boards that we put so much trust in to regulate who is allowed to be in it. The patient must submit an application to the Department of Health. The card has the name, the, the effective date, photo, and a bunch of other important, very important information. Uh, section uh, 15 talks about revoking cards for people not following the rules and allows for specific allows for, for criminal prosecution, the same as existing law. So if someone is, is acting like they're a card holder, but they're, but they're using it um, um, for recreational purposes, this bill's not, not designed to protect them, and it does not. Section 16 deals with business licenses for all cannabis businesses, uh, has the, the fees and the fines um, and, uh, and all the rules that they need uh, more globally. Uh, Section 17 talks about the business application process, which is very uh, specific and, and, having, and telling what the department has to consider. Section 18 is the approval process for, uh, for the number of businesses. Uh, they have 45 days to approve or deny a particular application. We're not allowing a bunch of these things all over the place. It's only what the market would bear. So it's akin to what we have as a certificate of need, Senator Turner, which you know a lot about for hospitals and, and adult care facilities. If, if, it, if, the, if there's a proliferate, there will not be a proliferation is the point. There, there must be, to make sure there's enough, 15 cultivators, farmers, uh, 25 dispensaries throughout the state, five, at, at least five um, processors and three producers. A producer is a combination of a cult cultivator and a dispensary because we're allowing a company to have both of those licenses if, uh, if they qualify. Um, Section 19 talks about general business requirements that you have to look at the criminal history of everybody involved, all owners, all investors of all of these businesses. You're not allowed to be a physician and, uh, and, and have any financial interest in any of these businesses. You cannot locate nor possess any of this near a school. Um, who can, it talks about who can and cannot be even on their boards, even if they're not investors. Section 20 talks about how to revoke business licenses. Just like the physician and like the patient, these businesses must behave. If they don't behave, they'll lose their license and their principles should be and will be prosecuted. This bill ain't no joke. This is a medical bill designed to help people who need it for medical reasons. This is a tough bill, Senator Turner. You can go back home and let's tell, tell our people how tight this thing is. Section 20, like I was saying, how to revoke licenses. Note, and if, if you revoke a license, uh, Senator Wheeler, it gives the, the right to notice, process, and right to be heard as we, uh, as we, as we have all over uh, Kentucky law. Section 21 deals with cultivator specifics. It sets up the tiers based on how big you are. If you want to be uh, a smaller operation or if you want to be a larger operation, your fees, your, your, your fees will, be, will be different. Section 22 deals with specifics about dispensaries. You must have a collaborative agreement with the pharmacy. I think that's what, something that we've, that we've put in, in the House. We have five uh, people, four, I think four pharmacists in the House and, uh, and one who, has a, who is involved in a pharmacy, and they, and they uh, understand how important this is, and I agree, how important to have a pharmacist at the table is. So, so uh, any dispensary has to have a collaborative agreement with, uh, with a pharmacy. Section 23 deals with processor specifics, very detailed. Section 25 deals with producer specifics. Section 20... Um, 24 section 25 deals with the safety compliance and i said you can have some of the the licenses of, of multiple licenses if you're a safety uh tester compliance tester you cannot have any other license or have any other role or in, interest in this in the um, medical cannabis world you have to only have you have to only test the product product to make sure it's safe i'm on 25 there are 42 but like 10 of them are are combined because it's all right, all right section 26 local governments may prohibit or 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 submit the question to voters, which I think is very interesting. So once we pass this bill, it'll be legal across Kentucky. If there's a particular, I'm going to use my own county, if Oldham County decides that they don't want it in a particular area, Crestwood 
can vote to allow it. Or if Odom County decides the fiscal, the, 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 um, the magistrates, they won't do this, by the way, I've talked to them. But if they decide, hey, I don't know, let's put it to the people and let them decide, then they can make a referendum, as we do, wet dry votes. But it's legal everywhere with the opportunity to take it away. And if a particular take, a county takes it away, a city can allow it in their jurisdiction. Section 27 deals with data maintenance to make sure all the players know everything going on, including law enforcement. Section 28, uh, department regulates, uh, says what the department must regulate and provides a system to monitor the program, as I said, for all the participants. Section 29, there's no th third party payor. That's unfortunate. So there's no insurer doesn't cover this. Medicaid doesn't cover this. That's very unfortunate. We try to, I, one of the reasons that I'm so strongly for this is for indigent folks, and I'll get to that in just a moment because we have a section to try to have access for people who are indigent. Section 30 exempts medical cannabis from excise tax on controlled tough substances. No taxing there. We tax it in, in a different way in just a moment. I'm getting that to that right now. Section 31 creates a state trust fund. The state trust fund is on the fees and the fines and the penalties of, the, of the, all the businesses that are, that are involved. 60% goes to the Department of Health to administer the program. 2.5% goes to grants and education for research. 13.75% goes to law enforcement. 13.75 goes to indigent access. And then the remaining 10% goes to the Department of, um, of Health if they need more than the original 60% they get. If they don't, and I'm hoping they don't, if they don't, it goes to provide more access to indigent ac uh, care. Section 33 provides a local trust fund. I just talked about the, the, um, the state trust fund. There's also a local test tr trust fund uh, that, that goes to, uh, to, to law enforcement and to local um, cities and counties to make sure that they cover their costs of of uh, ensuring that we have the right uh, apparatus in place for public safety. Section 33 establishes the excise tax for medical cannabis, 12% on the profits of the cultivator and processor. 80% of that goes to the state trust fund. 20% of that goes to the local trust fund. Dispensary is not taxed, point of sale not taxed. We don't do that with medicine in Kentucky. We keep that. Sections 34 to 42 are conforming language. That's the bill, Mr. Chairman. A couple quick remarks uh, in addition to that. We took the best parts from other states from Oklahoma, from Colorado, from Connecticut, from all the states, and we, we made the Kentucky version. This is the most, this is the tightest version, much tighter than I want it to be, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a tight version that I think we can get past. My objections, when I first ran for office, I objected, I was against this. I met with a group of people at Crestwood Library, and I had all these brilliant reasons why I was against it, and I was going through them, and I thought I had to meet with them. I knew we, we differed, but I thought it was my responsibility to look, look them in the eye and talk to them, there are eight of them. They look just like us. They weren't folks just trying to get high or trying to, trying to get, get by some kind of a rule. They wanted to be better. They wanted to feel better. And as I was given my reasons, one of them leaned forward, I'll never forget it, touched my hand and said, Jason, listen to me for a second. Let me tell you what it means to my child. I'll never forget it. I wasn't convinced, but I, was, I, I knew that I had a question. And I went back and I studied. I talked to physicians in my district. The overwhelming majority of the physicians I talked to supported medical cannabis, provided we had the right bill. When I turned my position, I said, I'm going to make the right bill. We already had a really good one. Senator John, John, uh, um, my, my mind is blank here. He's my good friend. John Sims, hello, hello, from Fleming County. John Sims is, um, had a wonderful bill. We, he and I improved this thing together with Senator West and some others. Um, so the objections I had were banking. How can you bank? Well, according to the Department of Treasury, 559 banks across the country provide this access and, 100 and over 180 credit unions. Banking's not an issue. What about the slippery slope? I don't want to bring, I don't want this stuff for my people. Well, let's not kid ourselves. We're not bringing marijuana to Kentucky with this bill. Okay, let's not, let's not be silly. What we're doing though, is we're bringing tested products to this, to this, to Kentucky. We're letting mom go get products for her child. We're letting dad get it for his wife at a place where the lights are bright and the products have been tested. They don't have to go in the, they don't have to go to the alley and get it from a trafficker, which is fentanyl involved in there, Senator Heaven? I don't know, Representative Heaven, I don't know. Is fentanyl over there? It won't be in this product. We're not bringing marijuana to Kentucky. We're bringing clean, good, tested, safe marijuana to Kentucky. Does it really help folks? Nobody can say with a straight face it doesn't. I'm not here to tell you it cures the world's, product, the, the world's problems, but there's nobody here that can tell you it doesn't help, help folk. Nobody. The biggest problem I had, because I'm a lawyer, is it violates federal law. I can't, I can't be for something that violates federal law. Well, 
so I looked up, I, I got into that a little bit. There's something I want you to, I want you guys to, 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 to follow me up on this, make sure I'm not joking because I didn't believe it at first. There's something called the Rohrabacher Farm Amendment, which has been put on all the federal budgets since 2014. And it says that no federal dollars can be used to enforce federal prohibitions against marijuana in states that have medical marijuana programs. You know what's interesting? They list 33 states. At the beginning, they list 33 states. One of them was Kentucky. Federal government considers Kentucky to be uh, violative of the federal uh, uh, Schedule One because we have the CBD. It says, none of the funds made available in this act to the Department of Justice may be used with respect to the states of Alabama, list a bunch of them, including Kentucky, to prevent such states from implementing their own state laws that authorize the use, distribution, possession, or cultivation of medical marijuana. Congress, the United States Congress, has passed that, that into every budget since 2014, including the current one, that says we're not going to prosecute, we're not going to enforce federal law in states that have medical marijuana programs. I'm going to end with a quick story and I'm done. I was campaigning in 2018. After I turned my position, changed my position, I was worried I was in front of my skis, over my skis. Um, but I was campaigning, going door to door as we do. And I went to this fellow's house who was 85 years old. You have your sheet. I'm sure the Democrats have it too. Republicans, we have our sheet. We have our, our database. And I know how many registered voters are in the house. There was one man, 85-year-old man, Republican, knock on the door. He answers. I say, hey, my name is Jason Nemus. I'm your state representative. Run for re-election. We do, I was doing the pitch. He stopped me in the middle of the pitch. And he said, aren't you that fellow pushing marijuana? And I thought, oh, man, he's, he's about six foot four, 85. He could put me down if he wanted to. So I got kind of, probably kind of bowed up a little bit, get ready, got ready for my argument. And I said, well, yes, sir. And I was starting to defend myself. And he start, I'm not going to tell you he started tearing up, Representative Massey. I'm going to tell you he started bawling. This man started bawling in front of his representative who he'd never met before. And I said, what's on your mind, buddy? What's on your mind? And he pointed to a couch. He said, my wife just died. Died of cancer. She couldn't get off the couch because she was so nauseous. We got two sons, and they provided medical marijuana to their mom. Jason, we don't break the law. It's not who we are. But that allowed my wife to get off the couch. It allowed her to live at the end of her life. Mr. Chairman, there are questions around this subject, but this is an unqualified good for our people. I hope we get a vote. It passed 65 to 30 in the House. It will pass with similar percentages in the Senate. I, I request a vote. If you're against it, I respect you. Vote no, but let's vote. This is good for our people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.